Now in this clip, we're going to start with the basic punches that are taught in our system of Kali Kung Tao. Now there are many more strikes that we're going to show later on, but we typically start new students off with these punches because they're more familiar with them, especially in Western society. Now we're going to start with the jab. The jab is always thrown with the lead hand. If you notice here, it rotates as you extend it, similar to a reverse punch that some of you may be familiar with. Now when you punch, you want to throw the punch from the shoulder, not the elbow. You don't want to hyperextend the elbow. Also make sure you don't pull back first. Wherever the hand is, you just shoot it out, extend it from there as you punch. The cross comes from the rear hand. Anything coming from your lead hand is a jab, the rear hand is a cross. It basically comes out the same way, it's a straight punch, and you rotate the fist as you make contact. Remember to keep that lead hand up guarding your face. Now we're putting them together. The jab then the cross. Just remember when one goes out, the other one must come back to guard or protect the face. If you or your students are having trouble keeping your hands up, try this little drill. Just hold a piece of rope, jump rope, any type of rope in both hands. And as you as you can see here, as you throw the punch, it will pull the other hand back to guard the face. Now the hook. The hook can be thrown with the fist in the vertical or horizontal position. That's up to you. The most important thing is to keep the arm at a 90 degree angle. Don't overextend. If you continue with that punch until your arm is straight, you expose your ribs to a counterattack. You also want to note the turning of the waist. The power is in the waist, not in the arms. Uppercut. Here's another one where the arm stays in a 90 degree position. You don't want to keep going with that and straighten that arm out. In the uppercut you use the legs to propel that punch. Notice how I drop down and with the legs drive the punch upward.
Now this is a bit of an exaggeration here with the legs so you can see what I'm talking about. The overhand isn't used too much, but it's good to know. Sometimes you can shoot it in over the top of your opponent's guard to get a punch in that way. Or if you hit to the midsection first as he doubles over, you can use your overhand there. Just be careful that you're hitting the jaw or face and not the back of the head where you can break some knuckles. The hammer fist may be a little bit awkward at first, but it's a lot safer to use against your hard targets, the face or any bony areas, because of the extra padding you have. Also used as a muscle destruction. When uh, some of the punches come in, you'll use that against the forearm or bicep, which we'll show you later. Now the hammer fist doesn't have to be used in pairs as you see here. This first strike could be a hammer fist and then the next one could be a cross. Now in Kali this is called a bolo punch. In Kun Tao it is sometimes referred to as an elephant's trunk strike. Now the bolo punch is two punches together. The first part of this strikes with the back knuckles, then as the punch comes around, it turns to a uppercut or shovel hook strike. This can be used in a variety of ways. The first one could attack under the chin, and then as you come around with the uppercut, you can strike the chin again. Or as we use it here, the first one is a destruction, the second one goes to the midsection or ribs. 